Okay, so welcome to the last presentation before we can go to lunch. So uh, I try to do my best. Um, how to build a public cloud after uh, the presentation of this uh, week. Rename it to uh, how to build a public bunch of server. But uh, I hope it's okay if we keep the term cloud because, uh, yeah. When you see the agenda, um, it's more or less the journey of choices and decisions we had to uh, build another public cloud in Switzerland. So uh, I will just go through all the topics in the presentation. Now, do we really need another public cloud in Switzerland? Um, well, obviously the answer was yes, otherwise the presentation would get uh, rather short here. So. Um, what are the differences we can deliver to our customers and uh, what are the key points we think that we have a chance also here in Switzerland with another public cloud? Well, one, of course, um, located in Switzerland. This is, I think, one of the key points. And what we basically want to do is just to deliver all these goodies that the big public cloud providers have, like a self-service portal, pay-per-use, all this stuff, also to our customers in Switzerland, and there are also a lot of customers which uh, prefer to deal with a smaller company. They don't have to go to Google, they don't have to go to Amazon, they can come to us, and we also help them to bring their workload into the cloud. So when you start with public cloud, what we did, um, you have to plan, and the best tip I can give you here is you have to take really enough time to plan what you want to do. So you have to take a closer look to your workload. Do not expect that everything is working smoothly on your cloud. So uh, if there are a lot of customers which try to run OLTP databases on your cloud and you have a software defined storage, a storage as a backend, then you will be in deeper troubles. So try to identify your workload and uh, also make the architecture so that it's able to run this workload. Then licenses issues. Um, the easiest way, uh, you say, just it's uh, the problem of our customers, so uh, they have to solve it uh, on their own. But there are also licensing, licensing issues and uh, you also have to think about that. And then another thing is start small. Uh, you do not need 200 Ceph servers to deploy your cloud. You can work with uh, a, a few servers to test it, to implement it, to test the deployment. Then you can easily scale. One question we also had to answer is um, which distribution do we want to use? It was clear that we will use OpenStack, but do we use the upstream? Do we use um, other implementation? And uh, since Acceleris is a Red Hat premier partner, the choice also there was quite easy. And uh, we decided that we will go with uh, the Red Hat OpenStack enterprise uh, platform. We also then agreed that we will uh, do this certified cloud and service provider program. That means that we can provide official um, Red Hat services on our cloud and you can also bring your Red Hat licenses to run on our cloud and uh, you get the official support from Red Hat as you did if you would uh, use it as on-premise. Disadvantage, yes, you have to pay, but as soon as you see that there are some bugs available and you can open bug reports, you will pay that with a smile in your face because you really get uh, some help from Red Hat. Now, the architecture, um, what we tried to do is build a scalable architecture, of course, with the cloud. So we had this concept, spine leaf. This is quite common, not really something special. Um, and uh, with this concept we have implemented here, we can scale up to about 1,000 nodes. So um, it's small in, in, uh, if you uh, compare to Google, whatever, but uh, for Switzerland that would be okay. And we then introduced this building block concept, so under every leaf switches, we have our building block where we can 
put in place some compute node, Ceph node, whatever. And also the core here is uh, 40 gigabit, and uh, the rest in the spike in the leaf network is uh, 10 gigabit. Then of course you also have to decide how do we attach these servers to the network. And uh, we are doing it now with uh, the production 10 gigabit with LACP active active. And uh, we also have a separate management network. So there, this is one gigabit active passive to separate switches and also the ILOM management uh, for, the, uh, for the management of the hardware. And then the big question, what hardware do you use? Um, we are coming from a flexbot environment, we are running this uh, currently and uh, there is Cisco switching, routing, firewall in place. We have Cisco UCS for compute and we use NetApp storage as a, a storage provider. And the question is, do we still need this kind of premium hardware in a cloud environment? And do we really want to pay that much of money for the maintenance fee you have to pay every year and so on? So the question was storage, do we go with a classical um, disk array or do we choose something else like Ceph? And also the routing, um, these big Cisco routers, they are very nice, but um, we believe that the future is in the software. So we go with uh, Ceph storage and we go with Neutron for routing. And um, the routing we have to do to go to the internet is done by the firewall, so we can do pretty much um, everything in, in software. And the key point also for an OpenStack installation, in my view, is you need to have support of the software, because here, this is um, the thing which will make you headaches and problems, uh, not the hardware anymore. There was one exception. Um, we have chosen to keep with uh, Cisco firewalls on the border. So um, I just used to the idea that we have something that uh, every traffic is going through or coming in that we can say, okay, here has to be some kind of traffic. And uh, so if you virtualize also the border firewall, then it really gets nasty if you have problems also security-wise. And uh, also a good point is that uh, a lot of our customers already use Cisco, uh, any connect, and uh, if we migrate them to the new platform, we'll just uh, switch the DNS entries and then they will connect again to the new platform and they do not have to reinstall anything. OpenStack has a lot of modules, a lot of projects, and um, in the end there are still some functionalities missing. So there is no really good backup solution implemented. Central logging, there are projects which, uh, which are addressing these issues, but at the moment I think it's not really uh, usable or does not have the same features as Plunk have. And also monitoring, we decided to go with uh, Insinga 2, which is um, quite a cool tool. And the whole automation configuration management is done by Pop. So um, this is a major tool, and we already used it in a lot of projects. So that was also um, easy So in the end, the blueprint of this Acceleris cloud looks like this. Um, we do not use a lot of our old platform, it just everything beside the firewalls is new, and also new technology. Um, we use this Red Hat OpenStack distribution with Red Hat Satellite and uh, Red Hat Identity Management. Compute, we have chosen to go with Quanta, so uh, we ordered them directly from Shanghai, I think. And um, firewall, as said, uh, we stick with uh, the oh. And the switches are also from, from Quanta. The first 
drawing of our architecture then looks like that. So we have here somewhere the internet which is connected to, uh, this is not for accelerators, this is the access building block with the switches and the firewall cluster which is connected to the spine switches and then we have our first building block with uh, management switches, leaf switches and then we have three control nodes, so it's a control node cluster and at the initial deployment we started with five CEPH nodes and eight compute nodes. <coughs> but then there are some challenges you may face. So um, if you want to deploy OpenStack, you have first to install the OpenStack directory to deploy the undercloud. And you have, you need somewhere a system where you can do that. Then also the backup is not addressed. Uh, central monitoring is not addressed, and where do you want to install satellite and uh, identity manager. So we have to exp had to expand our architecture with, uh, we call them global shared nodes. So these are nodes where we can install all the central infrastructure stuff on it, and uh, they are not based on the uh, OpenStack, they are based on REF, so they should work stable. And uh, we then install in, in the virtual machine, Red Hat Satellite, IDM, Puppet, the central monitoring, and Splunk. And for the monitoring, we use, for example, the distributed monitoring. So we then have satellites within the OpenStack project. And then we aggregate everything in the central monitoring. These management uh, nodes, global shared nodes, they have access to all management networks. So um, um, if I would hack the whole platform, I would try to get access to these systems so you should keep them secure. Backup, how we do the backup. Um, first, we do not use tapes anymore. And uh, we just do a backup to the disk with uh, Bacula. And we have chosen to go with uh, some bigger quanta systems where we can put in about 78 data disks and uh, we run Solaris on them. Uh, yeah, okay. So ZFS is known to work very well with uh, a lot of disks and uh, one real reason I think is uh, this cryptoware. I, I really do not hope that there will ever be a cryptoware which runs on Linux, but if, the, if it would get that one is running on them, then I certainly should that this crypto will not run on Solaris, so uh, in the end we should keep the date of the customers. And the concept with uh, Solaris zones, we just use them um, on the backup node, we create different zones for infrastructure and uh, then for the OpenStack project. So customers also get access if they want to uh, their own backup server and they can uh, backup and restore their data on their own and uh, this data is kept completely outside of the of the OpenStack installation. So, the architecture version 2, the fat tier in the first building block this global shared nodes and also this, this backup nodes. And if you have put everything in place, you have no errors in your cabling, everything, the hardware and uh, the ILOMs are configured correctly, you can then install the undercloud and deploy the overcloud. Um, you should have a long time to do that, so uh, this is quite a challenging process and uh, it took us about two months together with Red Hat. Um, we hit quite a lot of bugs and problems, but they uh, did a fairly good job to help us on that. We also updated the uh, OpenStack platform several times, so we started with um, OpenStack 7.1, then we updated to 7.2, 7.3, and now we are on uh, 8.0, so we are on Liberty, and uh, hopefully this is now the last update for the next few months, so that you really can go into production. Till then, if, if the 
platform, if the basic infrastructure is running well, there are quite a few things which are, were not addressed and which are also not addressed by OpenStack itself. So, uh, how do you build your customer or how do you onboard them? And also the Horizon dashboard is not really um, yeah, self-explainable for users who do not have a lot of experience if they should build their own networks and routers and stuff like that. So you should choose there some kind of easier um, self-service portal. We have chosen Atomia. I don't know if you know that. They are from Sweden. And uh, they have all this um, self-service portal charging billing implemented quite a good way. So, um, I'm quite sure that we will go uh, into production uh, soon. Well, if you ask our CEO, then we'll go into production next month, so in July. If you ask me, we'll go into production soon. So. <laughs> <coughs> and also another topic is you have to integrate your platform. You have existing CRM, you have ERP systems, you have CMDB. And you really have to find a way that they talk together that you can uh, manage the whole platform. And um, so this is also not a, a very easy task. And uh, yeah, so all the details probably in the next present uh, presentation. Lessons learned, um, we learned a lot. And uh, building a fully automated infrastructure as a service is, is quite a challenging task. So. Uh, you will invest a lot of money and invest a lot of time to really get running. Um, in our view, go with a support distribution. It will make your life easier if you have support from people who so can work around the clock to help you. And the public cloud is a long-term project, so do not expect to install it and then uh, you will run on the same systems on the re same releases for the next five years. And also, if you miss a feature, do not start to implement it on your own because the chance is really great that others are also missing these features and they will come perhaps two or three releases later and then they are fully implemented. <laughs> if you start to replace key components of the OpenStack infrastructure, you will probably lose the possibility to update your uh, infrastructure, your open cloud, OpenStack platform, and uh, so you will get into serious troubles if you then have to update it someday. And since everything is new, there is really a steep learning curve. So you have somewhere a problem on your platform, and then you have to dig where is it, where are the log files? Where are the, the tools? How can you debug it? And to really get used to all these new components which are installed there, um, you should really uh, prepare for this steep learning curve. And the last advice I can give you, um, the best tip, don't build your own public cloud, just use the accelerators. <laughs> So, so we have time for questions. Yes, please. Or are you that hungry? That, uh, <laughs> yes, operational experiences in managing crisis we have already a lot. So uh, self cluster problems and, and stuff like that, network problems. And uh, for workload, at the moment, we uh, test with uh, Rally. So we uh, have Rally in place, and we use that to um, test the functionality, of course, also to produce some load on, on deploying VMs, um, deploying networks. And also, if we uh, do some performance tuning, stuff like that, that we can then uh, compare the results of an old run to the new run, to the new run, if there are some differences. What are you using? Neutron. Neutron, just OBS. Okay. With the 
all the there, we just stick with the um, OpenStack standard. We do not want to replace it with other um, software defined networks just to really make it as easy as possible so to upgrade. And have you done, uh, have you um, made some experiences with network performance? Because it's thought that uh, OBS is, uh, doesn't scale very well. Um, yeah. Yes, so we heard about that. And uh, the problem there, or the, or the information we got, is that um, if you scale to a few hundred compute nodes, then you will run somewhere in problems. Still, uh, we do not have that much compute nodes, so the problem is not um, um, existing today for us. And uh, hopefully also there, if we have 2,000 nodes, then uh, I think we have already three or four OpenStack releases. Um, which will also address these issues. Okay. Yes. Uh, you mentioned you would pick up uh, net net app and like uh, monolithic uh, storage and all sorts of sets on uh, the huge classes. Uh, do you think this is uh, a good enough for um, high heavy uh, application? Is it only the AWS or Azure? They all have the local or centralized uh, existing platform storage. Yes. No, it, it, uh, it's not enough. <laughs> we will have to, to find another solution for really IO-centric uh, uh, workload, but uh, we will implement that on the next cycle, so not uh, for the public launch. Um, but uh, there are already plans to add uh, some kind of also for faster storage. Yes, we have to. For most of the workload, normal applications, servers, web servers, Really high loads, it's enough, but there are uh, workloads which just don't fit. Okay.